Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl Season 4. Today we're going to be doing a video on Red Daughter once again. So I really, really enjoyed last night's episode. It was my favourite episode of the season so far, by far. And I'm very excited to talk about more Red Daughter stuff. And this is going to be a bit of a theory video. We don't have any concrete evidence about any of this, but this is sort of just going off of what we found out in the last few episodes and what potentially could happen as we head towards the future for Supergirl Season 4. Alright, so let's move on and if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so this is interesting and this theory was brought up to me by many of you in my review, so I didn't clock this at first, but if you guys look back to last episode when Red Daughter was posing as Kara in America, but actually before she was posing as Kara, when she was just in America posing as a normal person, so she wasn't recognized by everyone as Supergirl, essentially, she was wearing a wig, and this wig was brown hair, it was very strange, it was very kind of weird, and it was very traditional, like, you know, going back in time, like, golden age, you know, around that time. and. The reason why she actually had that wig, it seems like it's because they are calling out to the original Supergirl. Supergirl, when she first appeared in the comic books, she was called Linda Lee, and she wasn't called Kara Danvers. That is more of a recent thing after, you know, different iterations and so on. But originally, she was called Linda Lee, and this was way back in the Golden Era, and she had hair basically very similar to the hair that you saw Melissa wear as Red Daughter in this episode. So this is definitely a callback to that. It's a very specific wig that they've got. They could have gone for anything. They could have just, you know, put on a basic wig, but it's something more eccentric. So that was curious when I was looking at it. And I didn't think of it at first, but thank you to all of you who actually pointed it out to me. Because now I have this theory that by the end of the season, what happens if Red Daughter actually doesn't get defeated? It's going to be different. What happens if they change it? And they change from what they've done with the villains at the end of each season, like Non at the end of last season, well, season one. He got defeated, Astra got defeated, and then Rhea got defeated, and then Rain got defeated. But, you know, Rain is actually fine, but, you know, they defeated part of her. And so what happens if Red Daughter, if she is the villain for the rest of the season that we're presuming she is, she's going to be taken over. What happens at the end of the season if they come around and actually make her into Linda Lee? That's the persona she takes on and she's good, she goes off and she's fine and maybe she becomes Kaznia's hero and she becomes a hero because last episode we got the teaser for her actually understanding Supergirl, understanding what she stands for but it was through manipulation that she's going to become a villain because she murdered all those people because of the supposed attack from America on, you know, the child's house who she was really, really good friends with because she originally saved him. So, what do you think of that theory? I think that's a really good idea if she takes on that Linda Lee persona because obviously the wig was a callback to that. And so, in the comics, Linda Lee actually originally was just a normal human she wasn't from outer space and she wasn't from krypton and she had no superhuman abilities so upon fusing with the matrix supergirl linda actually gained all her powers and she essentially got all the her super strength her speed her flight and everything like that and she became supergirl and she was able to produce the powers that we see today and so she changed from her normal persona as Linda Danvers or Linda Lee at various points that she changed and she had bond hair in the end but she originally had you know her brown hair that we see in the TV show so she didn't actually have powers and I think this is a key thing in my theory as to how this could happen is because as you know Red Daughter was created by the Haranel, and at the end of last season, we saw her literally come out of Supergirl. She's part of Supergirl because Supergirl touched the Haranel, and it went into the air, and essentially it's part of her. It's like a sister of sorts, like they said in last episode. But I think the idea of her actually having no abilities, you know, having no life, she shouldn't exist, is very similar to the original 
way that Linda actually got powers in the comics. So she actually, in this TV show, she got fused, essentially, while well, she got split. I don't know the other word for that. But anyway, she went away from that fusion, just being inside Supergirl, you know, her normal self. And she split, and she's this different persona. It's very, very similar, and I think that's a story that they could definitely tackle. And so I think everything is sort of leading up to this, and... On the other hand, Red Daughter could just be a villain and she is, you know, the Red Daughter version of Kara. She's like this darker side. Uh, she's not on the lines of Bizarro, but she has similarities to Bizarro because like Red Daughter, Bizarro was manipulated by a person, that being Maxwell Lord. And she was, you know, molded into this person that she, you know, probably wasn't deep down inside because she was just a normal person then. Maxwell Lord tested on her and so very similar Red Daughter arrived she was just you know very innocent she had no idea what had happened she didn't know like who she is she only remembered someone called Alex he pretends to be Alex because you know he's Lex and she gets confused so she thinks he's the person she knew and so she's essentially a blank slate and Lex has molded her and manipulated her very similar to how Maxwell did it to Bizarro back in season one. So that is essentially what my theory is. Like, I can see that this may be a bit too far out there for a lot of you guys, but at the same time, I think it's very possible. But most likely, Red Daughter is just going to continue actually being Red Daughter. She's going to be this villain because she's been manipulated, she's been changed. And she believes that America and Supergirl essentially are a plague. And so that's going to link into how Lex is going to return in the finale. Because we know that Kaznia, you know, the fictional state of Kaznia, or is it a country? I don't know. They actually want to invade America. They have this strained relationship with America. And having someone like Red Daughter as essentially a weapon for them to help invade some country that they don't agree with you know many different things we've seen this many times in the dc tv universe to do with kaznia but now with red daughter they can move on it and as it was said last episode lex the reason why he's probably going to return and you know he's going to be in prison for now and i know he's only shot two episodes and he's going to come back for the finale so i think this is how it links in because lex like you said last episode he wants to be the hero he wants to be seen and worshipped for what he does so he is manipulating Red Daughter to his own purpose so that Red Daughter will fight for the Kaznians she has a new suit and everything she's in National City she's gonna fight Supergirl and now Supergirl is painted as this sort of terrible figure in American society as we saw in the last trailer everyone is against her and so at that point they can take down Supergirl via Red Daughter and they can tarnish Supergirl using Red Daughter because she can pretend to be her as we saw last episode and they can manipulate things going on in America and it can be for the better for the Kaznians and then Lex is going to actually come and take advantage of this and stop the Kaznians, stop Red Daughter, he's going to betray Red Daughter although Red Daughter is being obviously quite naive, quite innocent, because she doesn't know that Lex is actually manipulating her, and he doesn't really care for her that much, apart from, you know, using her because she's a Kryptonian, he's never been able to do that or anything, so he's going to stop her, he's going to stop Kaznia, he's going to be this American hero. We've seen this quite a lot of times in the comics, more recently he wanted to actually save the Earth from Doomsday in The Reign of Superman, which was a new DC animated film. He tried to do that with his Lex suit, but then obviously it failed. And if you've seen that film, I won't spoil it too much, but essentially it's kind of similar. A lot of times in the comics, Lex wants to become the hero, become the man of tomorrow, unlike Superman. And that's why he hates Superman so much, because he has all these desires. And I think Red Daughter is just, you know, paralleling that and making his dream get even closer. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy this very video, let me know in the comments down below. Sorry if this was a bit rambly. Again, like I say in a lot of my theory videos, 
theories are quite hard to get across because, you know, it could be totally wrong, it could be right, I don't know, but hopefully you liked it anyway. So let me know, what do you think of the theory that Red Daughter might survive, she might just turn into a hero, she might turn back into a normal person and become Linda Lee as we've seen in the comics. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys later, goodbye.